Heart Desire, the Realization of Divine Perfection. The purpose of this video is to simplify to a higher degree the last video that I discussed, the idea of the two kinds of inner voice. Now, fundamentally, there's actually one inner voice, but one of the things that we do with our mind is we segment things so that we understand and then put it back together again. So in the last video, I talked about either mental chatter or what I refer to as the true inner voice. Now, when you have a heart desire, that which you want to see brought forth, you automatically affirm this heart desire and the inner voice is facilitated from what we would call the subconscious realm. The subconscious realm is the idea world, the divine plan world, the source of what we would call infinite intelligence, which allows us to accurately interpret our five sensory experience as contribution and in harmony to bringing forth what we desire. Thus, our heart desires are very important. When I reflect back on my journey, one of my goals was to not have this position, which I used to have, which was not being able to afford to do what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, and how I wanted to do it. I wanted this feeling of lack to go away. And because I had this desire to live in what we would call abundance, which doesn't necessarily mean having a lot of money, but rather the accurate amount so that you can experience reality the way you want to experience. Simply put, I had a desire to make money. The desire might not be the same desire as everyone else. However, I felt it in my heart. It was my heart desire. During that time, I also noticed that I had a lot of beliefs and assumptions about myself and others, which would externalize as people that would reveal the doubts within me. They would say, you shouldn't go after that. You should go after something else. But I knew that it was my heart desire. So what I aimed to do then was to release the ideas which formed limitations in my mind that said, I could not experience what I truly wanted to experience. This realization of bringing forth the success, hitting certain financial goals and continuously doing so also brought further awareness on the idea of desire. I also on the journey had a desire to achieve certain fitness goals, relationship goals, friendship goals, travel, a lot of different experiences that as what I would interpret as purpose. Now, through the realization of the purpose, I also started to notice a number of side effects, positive side effects. Number one is that because I focused on what it is that I actually wanted and change my interpretation of whatever I experienced in the journey to be in relation with what I wanted to experience, which was the heart desire, I also found myself transcending from limited beliefs and assumptions about myself as well as others. This was also experienced as what I call unconditional love. So one of the things that the heart desire does for us upon my reflection and having many conversations with others is it releases us from the prison of limitations, beliefs and assumptions that we have about ourselves, how reality works, that is within our mind that we have identified with that A, causes us to doubt that we will achieve our heart desires. Number two, causes us to express to other people to instill doubt in them, which is actually an externalization of what is going on within our own mind, playing out as theater with them, to hinder them listening to their own heart desires. Now, what we want to live in is a world where everybody honors and lives their true heart desires, because what I found is that they're always in the spirit of harmony with all. We realize this more so through the release of the prison of limitations. As Neville states, speaking to you 
through the medium of desire, God asks the question, What wantest thou of me? Then he tells you not to be concerned with the ways and means, for his ways are unsearchable. Now this means that within the subconscious mind, the subconscious realm, ideas, hunches, and inspirations will show up. Plans will show up. Outer world circumstances will change to reflect the exact desire that you want to see brought forth. And I notice that everything that I've ever desired from my heart in the past, which I know was meant for me, was brought forth. And what ended up happening on the journey is what I call purification of the mind, which was releasing a lot of times automatically and sometimes with cause and effect reflection, identifying these limiting beliefs and assumptions within myself and evolving them. And the beliefs and assumptions that were accurate were also found within, in reference to the last video. I call this the true inner voice. As these assumptions and beliefs that are accurate were found within, what I did was create subconscious mind audios as well as self-talk to further facilitate that and affirm it as the true beliefs. I then realized that these true beliefs facilitated a flow-based, autotelic-based journey, smooth journey to the realization. I also realized that I was interpreting reality to be in harmony and in contribution. I would see more signs and synchronicities. When someone said something to me, I would interpret it in a way where I would find a hidden meaning. And the meaning made sense to me. And this meaning then revealed me what to do next. For example, when I was building my IT business, one of the hunches that showed up was to go on Facebook and message a guy that was running a business group in Toronto. This hunch showed up within me, and because I was working with this information as a result of Thinking Grow Rich, I knew I had to take action on this particular hunch. So I messaged, so I messaged the guy and he invites me to meet up for coffee. We had an interesting conversation and I told him that I was building an IT business and he was building a business where he was building Joomla websites back in the days that was very popular for different businesses in the Toronto area. And what we did was we worked out a referral deal. Within a few weeks, he referred me to one client. That particular client gave me so much work that I had to hire my first contractor. And while I was there, I met the accountant who was doing the accounting work in that particular business. I ended up building a business relationship with her, serving her business, and she started referring me to a whole bunch of people. Through the network of connections that flowed from that one interaction that I had, by reaching out through the hunch and inspiration found within, my entire IT business was built and grown up to 50 clients in the course of a handful of years, few years, 2009 to 2013. Thus, the way that it was brought forth, I did not know. I could not have predicted it. But I did realize upon retrospect that I created it. How did I create it? Based on my assumption. What was my assumption? That some way, somehow, it was going to be brought forth. I had released, as discussed in the last video, from identifying in that regard to a doubt-based conversation as a result of bringing forth previous successes, as a result of honoring desires. Now, what then ended up happening was my consulting business and other business deals and joint ventures and things ended up happening that facilitated further business or success in the entrepreneurship realm. And yes, I could connect the dots looking backwards and articulate all these things that I did, but I could assure you that a lot of it was based on hunches and inspiration. It was based on intuition. So thus, I trust my intuition more so, and which is why I recommend it. I've made many videos discussing different things that you could do from productivity, business building, marketing, selling. All of those things are effects of the mind. You could work from the perspective of working with the effects, but what I found is more effective is what Neville refers to, which is working with the assumption within because we are given the gift of speech and mind. And what we are conversing about and how we believe reality to work is revealed in our inner conversations. And our inner conversations are what is being impressed 
on our subconscious via the imagination and externalizing as the bridge of incidents and the way we bring forth our success. Thus, the way to release from the prison of limitations is to honor and see your heart desires all the way to completion. Simply put, don't give up. For instance, he says, if you are imprisoned, no man would have to tell you that you should desire freedom. Freedom, or rather than desire of freedom, would be automatic. So why look behind the four walls of your prison bars? Take your attention from being imprisoned and being to feel yourself to be free. Feel it to the point where it's natural. The very second you do so, those prison bars will dissolve, apply the same principle to any problem. Now the five sensory interpretations that we may have learned from the past might deny the assumptions of the heart desire. But this is where we're called upon to practice faith. And faith is not blind. It is loyalty to the unseen reality. It is seen in the imagination. Thus, it is not blind. What it is not seen in is perhaps the five sensory experience. But through the selecting of that particular experience via the imagination, we have gone into a different state. We are actually in a different reality, even though it looks physically from the five sensory perspective the same. However, a new conversation shows up within. It is the accurate conversation of the inner voice, received within with what we would call intuition. He says there are two kinds of outlooks in the world possessed by everyone, a natural focus and a spiritual focus. The ancient teachers call the one the carnal mind and the other the mind of Christ. We may differentiate them as ordinary waking consciousness governed by our senses and a controlled imagination governed by desire. Thus, going back to the earlier part of our discussion in which he states, speaking to you through the medium of desire, God asks the question, what wantest thou of me? See, by living the heart desire, by honoring the heart desire and bringing forth the heart desire, the purification of the mind, the release of limitations becomes automatic or cause and effect reflection. But regardless, the limitations get released. Look at anybody who's created any kind of success. From the moment they had the idea of success and knew it was done to the fulfillment of that success, all throughout the journey was the release or the evolution of the inner dialogue. When I say release, I'm talking about releasing of the former conversation, that of indecision, doubt, and fear. Now, it is not to say that you should not or will not have fear, doubt, or indecision conversation. Always remember that that indecision, doubt, and fear-based conversation, if dwelled upon, can externalize on the bridge of incidents as experience. And thus, our goal, if we want to make the journey smooth to the destination, is identify the source of the disempowering programming and change our beliefs and assumption within. This may require revision, as in going back to what you believe had happened to you and changing the belief around so that you no longer see reality from that perspective and thus identify with it subconsciously, or to change your environments around so that they facilitate a higher degree of affirmation in relation to your vision such as joining a mastermind group or being around people, environment, circumstance, or information that further affirms the desired outcome. Now, the Christ mind is also referred to as fourth dimensional thinking. I recommend watching the video that I did on fourth dimensional thinking. Simply put, it is speaking within, via your inner voice, via your inner dialogue, that the unseen is seen. So that means, Whatever shows up on the five sensory journey, we reinterpret it within. We change our beliefs and assumptions within. When changing the beliefs and assumptions within, what we'll notice is that things will change. And on the journey of bringing forth desire after desire after desire, what you're going to notice is that you have released from so many limited view or limiting beliefs, which in essence refers to the prison bars, the prison of limitation. And as you release from these elements, it's going to be easier for you to bring forth future successes because these interpretations will no longer exist within.
Here are some ways of further facilitating this fourth dimensional thinking, which is, in essence, speaking as if the unseen is seen and observing as the unseen becomes seen. As in, whatever shows up on the journey, you see it as in contribution. If you get rejected in sales, you say, this is in contribution. Some way, somehow, I'm going to see how so, and then watch as an idea, hunch, or inspiration is received within via your inner voice to help you accurately interpret. You may see it as optimization data. You may see it as a way to change your positioning around or what it is that you're offering. All that kind of stuff that we refer to as marketing strategy, sales strategy, marketing techniques, marketing strategy, those things will become automatic. You'll notice yourself doing it because you will accurately assign the specific accurate perspective from within. I call this accurate thinking. Thus, fourth dimensional thinking is a facilitator of accurate thinking. We do this by changing the inner conversation. So we think thoughts that you are already perfect right now and one with your goal. One of the delusions that we have, which we end up releasing from on the journey after bringing success after success, or even the first success, is this idea that you are not perfect, that you have these flaws within you, and these flaws are holding you back from getting success or whatever it is that you want in your life. The truth is that we are divine perfection and we have interpretations of ourselves and others that can be externalized as other people revealing those so-called imperfections in us, but they are not revealing it to affirm it. They are revealing it so that we can reflect upon what is being revealed and change the assumptions within about how we see this imperfection within ourselves into one of perfection. So perhaps an affirmation like this can help you. I realize that I am right now divine perfection. I realize that my heart desire and what I want to experience in the journey is in relation to my self-image. I realize that my self-image right now is one of divine perfection. As a result, when I interact with people, environment, circumstance, and information on my journey, they reveal more so how so each day. Now, and we also want to see ourselves as one with the goal. As in, remember, when you have done the affirmation, when you know it is done, you are in a different state of mind. And in that state of mind, you were and are divine perfection. And from that state of mind, and we're talking fourth dimensionally here. So if a person does not realize how fourth dimensional thinking works, they're still thinking from the perspective of the narrative of what we would call five sensory world, which is one of past, present, and future. And you got to do all these convoluted things to produce the results. The past, the present, and future are now, and all things exist now in the fourth dimensional thinking. As stated, we speak within as the unseen is seen and the unseen becomes seen. We'll observe it. So that stated, we see ourselves as divine perfection now, and we realize this more so each day. And we also see the goal as one with us. We're one with the goal and run the journey to realizing the goal. Simply put, we don't give up and we change whatever beliefs and assumptions or perspectives or ideas that are disempowering in relation to ourselves or people, environment, circumstance, and information on the journey through audio affirmation, self-talk, revision, or environment. And I did a discussion on those four modalities. I'll put a link in the description. Till you realize the goal, you remain in it. And any kind of five-sensory experience that appears to deny the assumption, we have to remember that it appears based on our assumptions within, our beliefs within, and we have the power to change it. And also, see this as done from a place of flow. All of this is joyous activity that we do within our mind. Once we get into the flow about experiencing five sensory reality and continuously encouraging harmonious conversation, that which is in harmony and related to our goal, whatever our goal may be, we'll start to notice that we'll experience more flow and what we would call divine will or autotelic. You'll know what to do, what to say, how to behave. You'll have hunches and inspirations show up and you'll find accurate interpretation in relation to whatever shows up, and you'll also find yourself not believing if anything externalizes in the outer world that appears to deny the assumption, because you'll know that that is just an opinion and one that may have been externalized from past assumptions, and you can change the assumptions within. Now, as we dwell upon the past, 
We miss the present where all things are possible. So as we're having this conversation, all of this is happening right here in this eternal now. To dwell upon the past means to recreate from previous states of mind, previous states that may have nothing to do with the current state that you are now in, which is in harmony with what you desire to create, your heart desire. By going into a different state, you are in essence in a different reality. When you're in a different reality, it's a totally different conversation. It's a conversation of how everything is in contribution and related to your vision. And if we have any conversation about how it's not, we have the power to change it within. We have the two gifts, the gift of mind, and all is mind, the universe is mental, as stated in the Kabbalion, and the gift of speech. The speech is the inner talking, which is our interpretation, which is what we are imagining. We can also look at it as what are we thinking about ourselves in relation to our goal, in relation to people, environment, circumstance, and information, once we have selected the ideal state that we want to be in, in relation to our goal. What are we imagining? Having nothing to hide, we live fearlessly, unshamed, and have no need to justify our intuition, thus further releasing unnecessary complexity. One of the goals is to release from this idea of shame, that you don't deserve your heart desire. That may be a belief from past assumption that you have incorporated from the outer world, but as you release it, you'll find yourself trusting your intuition, taking action, knowing what to say, how to say, when to say it, and it'll be a smoother journey, one that won't be riddled with unnecessary convolution and complexity by having to justify yourself for everything you do to create your success, which is apologizing for your heart desire, which by the way, doesn't really make any sense now at this point, when we realize, as quoted in the beginning, Speaking to you through the medium of desire, God asked the question, what wants thou of me? So why would we deny our heart desires, knowing that it's in harmony with everyone? Knowing that when you bring forth your heart desire, as Neville stated in one of his lectures, dwell in the end and you will hurt no one. Well, guess what? You also release from limitation, which is the prison of limitations, the shackles of the mind, and you also inspire others and you also create success in a way that is in harmony with others. The unnecessary convolution and complexity is created by association with fear, doubt, and indecision-based thinking, which ends up turning into manipulation. What we're working with here is the world within. We're realizing that we are one with imagination. This is all imagination, either externalized on the screen of space or what we would call the unseen reality or what we would call the inner world, traditionally our imagination, which is facilitated again by what we are imagining, otherwise referred to as what are we thinking? What are our assumptions? What are our beliefs? What are our perspectives? What are our interpretation in relation to ourselves, others, people, environment, circumstance, information on the journey to the fulfillment? As we receive the accurate assumptions within, we can affirm them using subconscious mind audios or self-talk. We can have conversations with others like mastermind, people that encourage those trains of thought. And then we'll observe as our thoughts change, our emotions accurately interpret and reflect outer world five sensory and inner world six sense, as well as ideal behaviors and circumstance change to reflect the journey of harmony to the fulfillment of what we desire to experience. Also referred to as the bridge of incidents. Let's talk about this. Earnest concentration. What we're referring to here is unwavering focus. I also refer to this as earnest concentration. Earnest concentration really means that you honor the heart desire. You continue to adjust the programming within the mind to be in harmony with the heart desire, which is actually what you want to do. Because what we're doing is we're removing from limitation. Thus, further realizing and working with fourth dimensional thinking. Here are three ways. Number one, create your own way based on the law which governs speech and mind. So the law, which is you become what you think about, reality is an externalization of our assumptions within, is based on the elements of speech and mind. What are we imagining in mind? And our inner speech is what we are imagining. Neville says, even though at the end of my journey, I will leave my things behind me and they will all be as though they were made of clay, 
all cheaply made, at that, every man, not knowing this, in fact, how many know it or care to know it? They still want to realize their earthly dreams, and I'm all for it. I teach it, but I cannot change the promise. The promise is fixed. That is, something that will come to every being in this world, for it has been predetermined. Where we are going. This is where we are going after this existence, however. But when we are here, in this world of Caesar, I can cushion the blows, the inevitable blows, by learning the technique of law and how to apply it and how to use it. So while you are here in this world, going to the already predetermined promise, you can listen to the heart desires that are received within, whatever you choose to bring forth from your heart desire, using the power of speech and mind. I always say this, so I'll say it again. I probably said it about a thousand times in all my videos. The heart desires and the mind creates. Number two, release from unnecessary reactivity to the world of Caesar. So we are here. We're experiencing reality. There is empowering program, disempowering program. There's all this stuff happening. And he states, and may I tell you, don't try to argue with anybody who tries to give you all the reasons of Caesar why it can't be. That's all we got to do. We got to persist in the assumption within. There's no need for justifying or arguing. We change the inner dialogue and we observe as the outer world changes. This is fundamentally the law. Again, governed by the speech and mind. Number three, reflect on the mirror of time and space, otherwise known as the screen of space. So cause and effect reflection. What are we imagining? It's being externalized. So we change what we imagine through our inner conversation and watch as reality changes. Now, James Allen said this really well. He says, he who resolves that he will not rest satisfied with appearances, shadows, illusions, shall, by the piercing light of that resolve, disperse every fleeting fantasy and shall enter into the substance and reality of life. He shall learn how to live and he shall live. Outer world appearances, shadows, illusions, and externalizations of past states are what we are, as he states here, by the piercing light of that resolve, as in not satisfied with that, but rather what is satisfactory, more accurately put, in harmony with what you desire. By that piercing light of resolve, you shall disperse every fleeting fantasy and shall enter into the substance and reality of life, realizing that it is the speech and mind that is creating the experience, the bridge of incidents, the destination, the experience of life on this journey till we get to the promise. And again, reflecting on what Neville states, but when we are here in this world of Caesar, I can cushion the blows, the inevitable blows, by learning the technique of law and how to apply it and how to use it. Essentially, living life the way your heart desires. And since the divine speaks to you through the medium of desire, then it is actually what you really want to do. We are told, He who has not loved does not know God, for God is love. This is not a conclusion that the prophet reached after years of philosophic study but an act of God of self-revelation. If God never revealed himself to man, I doubt that man would ever know that God is love. But in spite of all the horror in the world, I know from experience that God is love. And what our heart desires is from a place of love. So thus, a way to know God is through our heart desire, bringing forth our heart desire, bringing forth the success and the heart desires that you want to see brought forth. This is to know love. It is to experience love, to know love, and dwell in deeper levels of love. When we have forgotten the former self, we become a mirror in which the state is reflected on the screen of space. The former self refers to past identity, past assumptions and beliefs that are part of the past identity that we continue to perhaps affirm through our inner conversation, inner dialogue, inner speaking. Remember the gift of speech and mind? Once we remove, otherwise known as the former man, the former self, we become a mirror. You reflect 
from within, on the screen of space, that which you had selected in your imagination. This is all found within. The desires are found within. The way to bring forth your desires are found within. The way to interpret five sensory experience in relation and in contribution to your vision is found within. Definitely, it can be inspired by the outer world. You can externalize from your mind, people, environment, circumstance, and information that reveal the way back to yourself. As stated here by James Allen, which will be our epilogue for today's discussion, set a great teacher to his disciples, those who shall be a lamp unto themselves, relying upon themselves only, and not relying upon any external help, but holding fast to the truth as their lamp, and seeking their salvation in the truth alone, shall not look for assistance to any besides themselves. It is they among my disciples who will reach the very topmost height, but they must be willing to learn. The teacher is within, and the teacher speaks from a place of love, from desire and love. And it is through the honoring of the desire that we realize love, that we share love with others. We then realize that no one is actually holding us back to bring forth what we desire. We can assume it to be that way and be even convinced to such a high degree that it is that way. But many of us, including myself on my journey, realize that if there was anybody holding myself back who appeared in the outer world, they were an externalization of beliefs and assumptions within. So what do we do? We change our beliefs and assumptions within. And as we change our beliefs and assumptions within, that which we desire to see brought forth and the way that it's designed to be brought forth is received in what was referred to here, the truth as their lamp. The truth is found within. The truth is found within is what was referred to here, is what was referred to here in this quote. The truth as their lamp. The truth is found within. If there's any kind of beliefs that you have about yourself that you are not already right now in your divine perfection, then it is a false interpretation of God because God is love. And to know love is to feel love more so each day by adjusting our speech within to everything. People, environment, circumstance, information, ourselves, our goal, our vision, our heart desire to adjust our inner conversation within. And the law that Neville refers to is governed by speech and mind. Simply put, as stated in the Bible, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. If you want a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.